And you are live. Good day, Future Cannabis Project community. Lobster Fan Farms here, cold chilling with DP and the Don Peter. And today I'm going to be going through how I take my cuttings for small scale production. Today is going to be easy. Um, I've done a couple previous shorts on how I take cuttings specifically when I'm uh, running through a pack of seeds. I've done one uh, specifically on trying to keep the cuts clean and like, uh, you know, protocols on that. This one is just like how I specifically take my cuttings. All the donor material today is going to be coming out of one garden bed. So I'm lucky I get to just use one pair of scissors, one glove. So everything's going to be pretty streamlined today. Um, the cuttings I'm going to be taking are from Nerds Genetics, Wilson Zero into the Honey Banana. Seems like a very, very special plant to me. Clones very easily, veges fast and very uniformly, um, doesn't have much shock when it goes into flower, doesn't have too high nutrition requirements, buds come in, they've pretty much finished earlier than my usual program, resin coated and super groovy, unique aromas, very, very fun to smoke, it's got just enough chill out, but definitely enough to like keep me doing my work, flavor for days. So, tools I have. I have my pair of scissors that are already sterilized with bleach. 10% bleach for at least, it depends who you ask. I've heard 30 seconds, I've heard 90 seconds, I've heard 20 minutes. I let them soak, let's just say that. Um, since I'm only doing one bed today, which pretty much means I, they're all sharing the same root zone, one glove, which is easy, but I am going to have a gloved hand for any, uh, any plant material I'm going to be touching. I have my rooting mix, which I've used for a long, long time. This is Dip and Grow. Just their suggested little dilution rate, a bottle that cost me probably, I didn't pay for it, someone gave it to me, but it would have cost like $30. It's lasted me four years or so now, and there's still plenty in it. Um, so I just do that to the recommended rate. I only have one cup because I'm only doing it from one bed. Usually I'd have one of these for every donor plant. <clears throat> so recently I've been using rock wool cubes. I'm pretty sure that everyone's done a lot of things. Everything's work. I did Oasis cubes for a long, long time. For whatever reason, I've just been digging how the rock wools have been acting recently. Um, I give these a soak, food grade bucket. Doesn't have any more than some amino acids, a little bit of fulvic acids, a little bit of humic acids, pH to 5.5, because that's what this manufacturer recommends for their cubes. So just so, quickly, that, that was a lot of water and then like a splash of the humic, a splash of the fulvic, a splash of other stuff? Yeah, I don't want to give too specific of amounts, but uh, that's what's in there. I also put some SLF 100 in there to get some like, positive enzyme action going on in there but if i had to measure i'd say i'd probably do about a half ounce maybe a quarter ounce per gallon of aminos but see this is all different stuff because every product's different too let's just say i use some amino acids some fulvic acids and some humic acids low amount of all of them since it's just cuttings i kind of just want them to have enough to keep grooving and just like take the shock well not really do much else I feel the SLF definitely helps with that. And uh, I'll soak them in there for like 30 seconds or so. That's what they recommend. I got some of my friends that used to soak them overnight. Some people that just dunk them right in. Most plants are pretty, pretty rugged. They're going to root up. So for this one, because I'm only doing however many plants, I have them in the middle kind of. So when the leaves are touching, they'll give each other like a little micro humidity environment. I've done it all from taking, you know, a hundred cuts in one tray like this to taking just like a handful, like down to like two. I don't think I've ever done one, but I have done two in these just for like, you know, trying to keep genetics going at a weird time. But I'm lucky today. I have all these already soaked. I got them in my hard tray, so it's not as floppy. I mean, there's tons of these, but I like ones that you could actually hold, especially when it's all wet and heavy and it just sits there. Humidity dome, simple tool to trade. This is going to go over afterwards. And then I'm using the underside of a tray to kind of like take my cuttings on. I only need one area like that since, again, it's all going to be coming from one bed, which I'm pretty much considering like one mother plant at this point and doing things. 
Um, what I'll do after that, I'll put them under, I have some T5s. The fixture I have has four four footers under it. Not quite sure what watt they are, maybe like 40 watts each, 50 watts each or something around there. Um, I found you don't need too much light to get them to root up happy and stay happy. If anything, too much light usually trips them out. Um, I personally don't like heat mats for over a decade. I haven't run a heat mat just because too many cuts got roached when they seemed like they would be good. And then they weren't. So my way around that is I'll either elevate the tray of cuts kind of on like a five gallon bucket or just something crude. And then it gets off the cold floor and kind of like the T5 will just keep the air warm. So I found that's the way around it. If you do have cold floors, I, I do not like heat mats myself, though. I don't think I've touched one in a long, long time, but they do work for certain people in certain environments. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them under the T5s, which I think are very valuable tools, cost effective, energy efficient. You could do a lot with them. So if anyone doesn't have just like, you know, their small little veg or propagation or genetic light, very cheap. You could do a lot with it. Do it to it. And uh, I'm going to put these under there. Light will probably be about three feet above it, two and a half, three feet above it. I like to see a little bit of condensation on the tray when I first put them under there to let them know that it's to let me know it's humid enough. If not, I'll kind of scoot them a little closer or maybe give them a little spray. Um, I let them just sit. I don't do anything to them after that. They just sit after about three to four days. I'll crack the vents on top. Sometimes I just do one. Sometimes I do each a quarter turn, maybe a day, maybe two days after that, I'll open the vents all the way. A day or two days after that, I'll kind of put the dome on like crooked so they can fully breathe. Like, I'm not sure if you can see it from there, but like I'll put the dome eventually where it's like kind of like this. So they're still protected and not getting much wind and still their own little microenvironment. But that's my step before taking the dome off. Now, this is where my technique differs from a lot of other people's. When I take my tray off, and uh, they sit there until they're like close enough dry till they would want another water. When they're, the cubes are dry enough where like they're pretty much gonna wilt in 12 hours, 24 hours, that's when I'll transplant them into a Dixie cup with some light nutrition soil. And uh, it doesn't matter to me if they're showing roots not or yet. If they are, that's a bonus, most varieties are. If they're not, as long as they're at that dry point, from my experience, putting them into a Dixie cup with the right amount of moisture seems like that soil in there is almost a better buffer for that late moisture level in there, which like, I feel like that's the point when things grow wrong. Either the stem dampens off, which is hard to come back from, so it's not fun, or the plants just straight dry and frizzle out, which there's no way back to, it's even less fun. So I feel like me personally, I like to not have to worry too much about that vulnerable time, especially with having so much going on. So I just stick them all in Dixie cups as soon as they're dry enough. And uh, usually a very, very high success rate depending on the variety. But most of the time they all take, they're grooving. <laughs> so are you doing anything to the plant before you're snipping? Uh, like when you're planning to come in, you're like, all right, I'm gonna clone in like a week. Are you gonna be doing anything different to your plant before you start snipping? Are you gonna be training it differently? Are you looking at Absolute, where you want to be taking them? Absolutely. In an ideal world, I'll be doing many things. The cuts I'm taking from today haven't had much of any of that real world. But ideally, I would want to have a bunch of uh, foliars of aminos, maybe a foliar, like something with some kelp in it, mellow them out as far as feeding maybe something with less nitrogen. I don't really feed like too specific NPK like that, but I know that like less nitrogen before you take cuttings is good. I kind of just want them happy. I definitely jam them full of aminos. Um, recently with the insight that the chitosan might have uh, good properties to keeping the HPLV and other stuff kind of at bay, even if it doesn't beat it, it'll just like constantly like how Magic Johnson can live a happy, healthy life, even though he has it. It's like whatever treatment he's getting, it seems like a similar thing for the plants. So I've been trying to get that foliared on like somewhere in the week before. 
Um, but these ones up here, I don't think I got to foliar them once. Maybe I gave them some labs foliar after I transplanted them into the bed, but I've been super busy. So these ones are like not that turgid. They're kind of a little rant <laughs> and they're still adjusting to the bed, but I'm definitely going to take some cuts and, uh, it's also kind of a good test. I'm confident they're going to take, but it's the variety, like I was saying, which is just super rugged with the cuttings. It seems like everyone I give them to, it's like the plant just roots no matter what. So we'll see how it bounces, how it bounces back. There, there is a Tony, uh, hold on. Hey, yo, Sapo. Healthy yeah, moms with front loaded aminos and calcium, as well as some fulvic acids, get the hormone ratios on moms. Good. And plants will clone quickly. Hell yeah. Everyone knows I'm like abusive with my calcium addiction. So the, that's definitely in the girls all the time. And, uh, I agree just from uh, experience too, not really knowing, but it seems like if you foliar the aminos on, you know, maybe two to three times the week before you took the cuts, it just seemed like they didn't yellow out. They were ready to rock and roll as soon as they hit the Dixie cup. So I definitely agree with the big homie. I'm sure he's got more actual reason why I just see that it works, but I agree. Right. And, and to preface this whole conversation, this is just one man's way of doing it, looking for feedback. You don't need to be like, what an idiot. Uh, he's, he, he's looking for kind of like, hey, you should try this instead of that. Or have you ever thought about this? Or I wouldn't do that. Forgive me for my ignorance. I am just a lowly peasant farmer. I'm, I'm very uh, new to the cloning. I used an arrow cloner for the last year and a half. Uh, with great success with everything that's been coming up. I did see that question. Yeah, I, I've left them in there over an extraordinary long amount of time and definitely had to do some root trimming. Yeah, yeah. Those are fun videos. The root porn videos where you just keep on pulling <laughs> yeah. I, I wish I could dig them up, but I, I have uh, like photos and videos of Gemma when she was like two helping me transplant clones that were in the like left way too long in the arrow cloner and uh like her holding them up and going you know all the way down to the ground um oh yeah i am uh, going to be um so i'm gonna be doing the i use aloe for my my rooting hormones you know boom uh that, that, that's what i use but i'm gonna be trying into direct soil this time instead of the arrow cloners and such. So I do like what Mr. Toad was talking about. I heard him talking about that uh, a couple weeks ago, which interested me. And then I heard you talking about some of the same things up there rotten. So that's definitely a rabbit hole. I'm going to be jumping down. Yeah. I like the arrow cloners for some things, but I don't like them for others. Um, when they were first coming around, it seemed like you had to really, really sterilize the crap out of them. And like, I'm more about bleaching stuff and keeping stuff hyper sterile nowadays back then I was not like, I liked rotten gardens, the less work and like the more grime around, like I was in my paradise. So I never used them for that. Cause it seemed like it just didn't fit my style. It was, I was much more grimy than those would uh, allow. And it seems like nowadays how they could all share the rinse and like pass funky stuff. I still like them, but I feel like they should just be maybe like one mom at a time or like, just situational, you know? Yeah, and, kind of, my, my, I think my personal takeaway is the same as you with like, you know, have like when, when you, you have your, like your little like pea cup full of rooting hormone and like you all, you have like six of them cause you have six moms and you're dunking. So for me, as, especially cause I know Tony's thoughts on the arrow, uh, cloner, like I would, I conceptually, I love them. Like they work. They're just impressive. Uh, and uh, but the concept, like if I had one mom, maybe one arrow cloner per mom. And obviously you're not 100 percent mitigating all risk, but you're certainly not like because one plant could have, uh, from what I understand, like hop latent up in this area, but maybe like not down there. Yeah. Uh, so I heard so like um, with like that, if you're in a bed, they're, they're talking about how like the concentrated levels are down in like the root zone. Um, more so for, so if you're going to test for hoplate and viroid, test closer to the root zone or get a root sample, 
they're saying. But now they're talking about mycorrhizal transfer, and they're trying to figure yeah. out whether that's a problem. So if you're in beds, you know, um, I, I believe there, it. There, there's that now. So, Cooney. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm kind of in that camp. Like, I don't like talking too much shit, but it's like, I don't know. I just feel like the cubes are better. You can, it's, they're both tools. I feel like with using cubes and trays and domes, you can accomplish a lot more missions. So not that there's not like arrow cloners are shitty or trash, even though I do kind of feel that way, but I feel like it's just another tool. Like if you could utilize that tool, that's groovy. Like it's just, I don't know. The only time I did it, uh, my cousin had one of those little arrow garden things. If you remember maybe like 15 years ago, and there was like a little when home growing herbs was trendy and shit. And he had these little herbs in there. I remember I just brought over a cut in a napkin and I just put it in. I was like, watch how easy this is. Cause like you could do this. And then he had roots in like two weeks. He's like, I don't believe it. And it kind of got him down the path of like, I can do it, which was cool. But I think that's the only time I ever used one. It was like, have you ever herbs. flowered a, uh, or have you ever rooted a flowering, like a flower? Have you ever monster cropped? Like a flowering cannabis plant? Yeah. Like take, take a limb that's flowering that has oh, yeah. like a, a, a good, a good, uh, oh, yeah. but on it, you know, yeah, and that's what I'm gonna have to do. Cause out of the four by four, I clone, I have four plants and three of them took, and just one didn't, you know what I mean? I had multiple cuttings from all of them, all of them took except for that one plant. So now I'm like, all right, well I can either reveg it or before then I'm going to try to take a couple, uh, cuttings and try to get those to root some of the smaller ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, from my experience, it's almost like a reveg either way, depending how far into flower it is. Like, me and my crew, we've definitely taken cuts where they're like close to done. And it seems like they root pretty easy. Like it's not really a struggle to get them rooted. It's just a struggle to get them growing. So it's you had to like, get the revenge out. Yeah. yeah, I feel like depending how long they are in, you know, but we've done it like almost to the way where we would have harvested up to like full revenge of full plants. But from actual cuts, it's like, yeah, I feel like. It'll root, you know, maybe take a couple and then whichever one actually starts growing vegetation first, like fuck with that one. I'd say again with the aminos on that too. I found that helpful in reveg, doing some aminos and get some microbial life going. And uh seems like they kick in. Well shit, I'm wasting daylight. I'm gonna go get some cuts. So we will cut to yeah. camera two shortly. Oh, boom. Well, he's grabbing and that. He's he's there he is. Video. Okay. All right. You can see the honey bee are not that turgid. What's funny is they kind of just grow like this. Like they don't like poke up like most girls when they're kind of praying. These ones kind of have this little swoop and then they go up, which is very interesting. But this is less turgid than usual. I think it's because I just gave them a little drink and because they're still getting used to the bed. But they're happy. I'm going to flip them in a day or two. Um, since I have the option, I'm going to take the top for my cuts. Because from what I know, those ones like should take off the most if they got all the energy and like will to live up here. Not only that, it's going to help me shape the canopy for the bed. So it's kind of like a lot of good gardening in my mind is like a bunch of moves at once. So I'm going to take this cut here. And then it's going to have about four or five equal tops around the edge. And this plant grows very evenly and very fast. So I'm expecting like in two days when I flip these, this garden is just going to be full again. So give me one sec to snip. That's where we need the helmet cam. <laughs> so that's what I'm left with. Oh, God, this plant smells groovy and veg already. So that's what I'm left with. And then I'll clean up kind of the underneath in here. What's nice is, too, with the one pair of scissors, I can kind of do all the work on the bed, which just makes me like the beds more and more as far as, like, actual workflow and, like, getting through my day. It's just, it's just groovy. What's the humidity in that room? Uh, all fucked up because I had the door open and, uh, yeah, typically I'm shooting for when they're in veg here, I'd say 80 to 82 degrees, 55, 65 humidity. 
right now it depends on what meter you look at. It's either 80 or 71 with the door open. Humidity's all fucked up because the door's open. But, uh, you know, real life. Hey, what are you doing? Back it up. Why are you always coming in there? I see Toad in there. The aft gooeys are looking good. I got so many goos. I couldn't be happier. And they look good. NorCal Space Goo. These ones, I won't be able to take cuts off of these for like another, I don't know, three weeks. But So here's a lesson on what not to do, too. I should have not let this thing just be sitting out in the open air. But it's all good. Not everything's perfect. Can we flip back to camera one? Yeah. Boom. All right. So I got my scissors. I got my gloved hands. Now, here's another thing, too. I like taking cuts all the way up. Like this one that wasn't quite the on the top. I love cuts like this. Like these little ones with the beastier stem, they root up quick. And they might not necessarily jump as fast as top cuts when they're done up, but I love little cuts like this. Me, personally, I cut the leaves off. Some people do, some people don't. No science behind it. It just seems like what works better for me, for my experience, especially when you're packing. When we used to do, like, you know, 50 to 100 cuts per tray, you just make a little room for them. Mic check. Am I coming in? Anyone still there? You are loud and clear. Oh, right on. <laughs> the headphones have it too clear. I feel like I'm just spacing. <laughs> so again, even though these ones aren't too turgid, and this isn't the best case scenario, another variable is those lights are just about to go off in that room, which I would have took these cuts a lot earlier. But, uh, you know, life isn't perfect. Usually I like to take them more on the morning side. I've definitely done them at every point, including when they're asleep. And, uh, I mean, it works, you know. But ideally, I like them when they kind of wake up. They got all that energy stored up in that joie de vie, and they're just ready to ready to rock and roll. But there's, these ones are more like a little sleepy, and the light's strong in there, so they're probably a little strung out after a, a tough day of living in that garden bed. So I got the three that I took off of that plant, soaking in the cup, not too, too long. I always like to dip and grow too. I feel like the powders and the gels, they kind of just get around the stem more than like soak into it. I feel like with the dip and grow, it gets all up in there, you know, it's like liquid. I try to do mostly organic everything too, but from my experience, and things are different now with the available knowledge, don't get me wrong, I haven't tried it was pretty much the old option was Olivia's. If anyone remembers that like organic rooting tonic, uh, it was cool. It was in a groovy bottle. It was all, you know, crunchy, but shit didn't really work that well. So I fuck with the dip and grow. I've heard so many other things like aloe, you know, and all these other groovy things that work really well. But I just know that this works like a hundred percent, like all the time. So I've been fucking with it forever. It's very cost effective. And just quickly, this is uh, Tony's shared paper. Uh, interesting. Why cutting leaves delays rooting in cultivars? I believe it. This bro scientist has seen them do better that way. But I think I just like to have them be able to fit in there in the early days, too. When we were jamming off like 50 or 100 of them per tray, they would get PM. Like if we didn't cut them back, they would get PM for sure. But if we cut them back to where there wasn't too, too much left... You could root a whole jammy of them in there and have like as many plants as you needed for the spring or for whatever situation. But uh, I think it's just mumble, muscle memory addiction, too. I just fucking like snipping the leaves off. I've been doing it ever since. So I do know that it works, though. Even if it slows them down, there is an ideal. They're tough little monkeys. That is one good thing is that, uh, you know, you can, there's a million different ways that it can that it'll work, you know, and, and finding yours that works. And then after that, finding one that works and one that works with, you know, you do new things with your beds and such, you know, finding yeah. your in your new environment. 
Yeah, to be honest, I've had much less success just from experience leaving the whole leaves on, especially with ones that have big ass leaves. Um, that could be a whole host of other variables that my garden would be giving to it. It's hard to ever have, I feel like, one clear cut thing. But from my experience, these leaves are dirty too. That's one thing I realized making these beds, you gotta have the dust control on. I've foliared these at least once to try to get the dust off and uh, they're cruddy. Some cruddy grammy plants in there. It's a definite dust control. Is that the, the new bed? Yeah, this is the new one. Okay, okay, okay. Rocking and rolling. I'm gonna, I uh, bought some worms today from local dude at Worm Mania. Um, I got my gift pack from grassroots of like the different uh, bacterial soil builders and like different stuff like that. I'm going to add those when the plants wake up uh, in the morning too. But I think they're ready to rock. These plants like this, eight of these little honey bananas, once I clean them up and flip them, they're going to end up fucking sky high, I predict, just like the, uh, the other bed did. Seems like they're rooting up. They're starting to drink the moisture. I'll throw a little more dirt and compost and X, Y, Z on top, a little more food. And uh, I think they're ready to rock and roll. The other plants are, so as usual, it's kind of like you got to work with the least factor. It's like these ones back here, I'm doing a little experiment where I have three plants per 20 gallon and they're, they're overgrown. Like they have to get flipped soon. These ones in the 10 gallon with the normal protocol, they're ready to get flipped. They're flipped soon. So this has to go back to a flower room. It's pretty much a temporary bedroom. Just hosting a whole score of plants. Tons of AFCO. Looking for them goo terps. And Cheddar Bob wanted to know if you're going to do any cover cropping in that uh, bed. No. Maybe garlic. But no. Uh, Tony, text it to me and I'll, uh, I'll uh, try to even pull up the page. So for a cover crop, you're, you're uh, choosing not to the cover crop. What, what made you want to go about that? Uh, I don't want to bring a whole host of weird. So this is actually a good segue into a whole concept that's been in my mind that I haven't spoken about. I feel like with a lot of this quote unquote living soil and all these different techniques, it's really like trying to play God to the next level. And I feel like it ain't going to happen. So it's like, I want to try to use the chaos in nature on my side and limit her chaos. Like, I don't know. Like, the plant's going to eat. They're going to have food. They're going to have readily available nutrition. I don't know. It's a whole other subject. I'm not, I'm not trying to go too much on the God plan. I'm not trying to bring what mother earth has created and her majestic beauty out in mother nature like it just ain't happening i don't know <laughs> so no i just want to have happy fed plants i don't want to recreate mother earth in my bed i just want so, yeah I just that's want not, dang not flowers. all right so you, yeah you don't care about like the, the relationship between like the soil and the plants and all. you just want to be able to I put do. that in there I and do, be able but to I'm get not going to gonna pretend to understand it or comprehend the chaos of nature I feel like it's just folly I'm going to work with what I know and I'm going to try to put some worms in there and I'm gonna well I think to... it's also you're just starting doing this stuff so like take it one step at a time right yeah like... everyone always has 15 opinions it's like do this this is how you be God like I don't know I move slow. <laughs> so Can many you guys things, read this? So many things do so many things. It's like we can't do everything. I'm living in the real world here. I'm really working every day. Like I don't want to see a bunch of clover and weird shit in my garden. I just don't. Even if it has benefits, it has risks as well. It's more of it's sometimes it's the art as much as the science, too. I'm just trying to grow cannabis. I grow lots of vegetables and other stuff outside. I am very curious to grow garlic in the beds because I've heard that uh, 
the garlic enzymes will help the plants express their own terpenes like much more fuller. So I like all the different concepts on why cover crops are good. Uh, with the, with the uh, garlic, that's a, does that, it grows on the ground, right? The bulbs are on the ground. It does. And then like, I think so it's got what some... you'd have to do with that is um, uh, what's his name from Harry um, from uh, Harry Rose. Harry Harry Rose. Rose. Paradigm shit. Paradigm shit. Huh. Uh, he Alex was talking Hardy. about, yeah, Alex Hardy, that's it. Um, he was talking about like potatoes and stuff like that and how, why root vegetables or things like that can be damaging, especially if you're doing going to do it in a bed. Cause you're going to have to go down there and rip up all your roots, your whole root structure, everything that you've been building inside the bed, uh, for those. Um, but I absolutely understand what you're saying. I've heard a lot of stuff about that as well as adding those types of of things like the garlic that's having those noxious, those fumes and such that you might want to be transferred over. Um, but that is definitely I think it's something with the root zone, how specifically the garlic uh, rhizosphere has like produces some enzyme that will not make the plants necessarily taste more garlicky, but just help them express more of what they can do. And uh, I feel like there's just too much risk with insects with bringing in all the cover crops i know a lot of this community like likes insects i'm appalled by them i don't want too much shit in my garden like i know it's the web of life but it's, it's i don't know this is this is not yeah, my it's thing just finding out what you're getting into you know what i mean and what you're comfortable with like you said you're just getting into it so you don't want to overwhelm yourself you yeah. know and the more you're comfortable you get with it like when i first started with with i didn't know the first thing about it so i'm jamming living soil water only stuff and three to five gallon pots like why isn't this working and then once you start to you know once i started figuring out why it wasn't working and why they need bigger containers and why they need this and that you know it, it just starts coming together but until then you know what i mean you're just you're just doing it you know what i mean so i commend you on, on taking that step and going forward you know what i mean like you said you're just trying to grow the dank and, and you and you're doing it so yeah i've like like i'm definitely trying to build my soil Everyone, I feel like I'm trying to be like, you know, sharing with that process and it's fun, but like creating dank flowers is of much more higher importance to me, you know? And it's like, that's how I connect with nature. Not through like trying to mimic her in a soil base. It's through like seeing beautiful flowers that affect me and other people in a positive way. So it's not that I don't like people that always say I'm a soil bro or I'm a soil builder. Like I'm trying to grow dank. That's my prerogative. And if a happy soil is going to help me get there, I'll work slowly with that process to see if I could have danker flower. Well, I think also as you're learning something new, it's like to add yeah, variables to fun. start versus being like, okay, let me just get them in this raised bed. Like, all right, now I kind of understand what's going on and I'm like getting a, the hang of it. Now, Maybe let me add, let me try a, you know, someone mentioned like lettuce and kind of small cover crappy stuff or marigolds. It's like, all right, let me try something this time or not, so. Not really interested. I am interested in growing like a bonanza of vegetables on like an outdoor property this, this summer. That's for sure. Like I want to go companion plant crazy then and try to have like, you know, so many relationships it's just going to be a summer long party up there where like everything's grooving together but as far as indoors i don't think so i don't think i want it so this is uh tony just sent this one yeah big sapo got the know-how knows where to go for the no to Support Sapo, support Daga. Uh, okay, sorry. So cutting leaf tips, there's a one. F uh, so reasons in favor, leaves provide surface area for evapotranspiration, which might negatively affect rooting success. Too many leaves may crowd propagation trays. That was kind of one of the points you made. Reasons against cutting leaf tips. Leaves are a source of nutrients for clones and cutting leaf area may reduce nutrients. Leaves are also a source of natural rooting hormone. And then, uh, sorry, reducing number of leaves would be this one. Uh, high 
So reason in favor of reducing number of leaf, similar to, to the cutting leaf tips, the evapotranspiration may negatively affect rooting success. So that uh, using synthetic rooting hormone, so reason in favor of using it. Sorry, no, this must be reason in favor of not using it. I've had success by just forgetting them in a, a water bottle and leaving the water bottle somewhere. Yeah. Back like two weeks. Like, oh shit! Yeah, they they got some roots on there. Yeah, they're, tough little, they're tough little monkeys. Yeah. I do always like one thing I didn't say too is giving a little final snip right before I'm about to put it in the dunk. I like cutting just like a millimeter or two off. Give it a fresh cut before the dunk ski. Do you do any type of forty-five cutting or? Yeah. Yeah. Just a quick on an angle. These are small chores today too, but uh, I've done it all different ways. Where you like shave it or splice it up the middle, and uh, I haven't found any of them increase the success enough to merit wasting that much time on a large scale me personally just a nice little 45 like he says gucci oh yeah i'll be having to clone these lemon degreasers here shortly and then uh, so with the clones that i took of these plants what i did i just showed um, I just had them in the solo cup and I didn't really want to take up that much space. So I just threw all the solo cups because I'm going to be taking clones off of those. I'm not going to flower out those. Um, so I just threw them all in a five gallon the solo cups. That Hell way, yeah. I don't got to take as much space. They're going to have the nutrients they're going to want. I don't have the light on them. I have the light all the way over. I think you faded out when you went in the tent, homie. I know. I think he muted his phone. Oh, I sure did. <laughs> so, yeah, I got uh, those sitting over there away from the light. So that way they're not going to grow fast on me or anything like that. Um, and then I just have a little bit of put some lettuce in there and arugula, I think. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna use that for one of the lemon, lemon degreasers, and then I have my flower tent that I'll transplant the other ones into the uh 20 gallons in the the um city pickers. But I am interested and excited about trying to clone a flowering plant, so just gonna have to take it through the re veg process once it roots. Did, did you hit on what you like about uh, this specific cultivar? You were talking before we started about uh, just how it see, oh, it's, God, it's great amazing. at rooting. I gave it to uh, a couple of my local homies, and uh, they said that it was like a super easy one to root, which is this is kind of a good test because these aren't like the best. This isn't the best donor material, but I, I imagine they'll still root up. Uh, Veg is very fast and uniformly, roots quick, doesn't have high nutrition uh, needs, um, flowers fairly quickly. I'd say for people running synthetics, they probably get it in eight weeks. I'm probably going to get it in nine weeks when I usually like to run 10, 10 and a half for most stuff, you know, like usually minimum unless it's something that's getting over mature at that time. And uh, flavor, very unique. I, I, it's hard to compare it to most like, you know, varieties that I've had. It definitely has like a buttery, honey, sweet. It's like mostly high end, like sweet, but definitely a thick smoke. Like usually like the low end funkier ones are. It's a nice thick smoke. Effect is awesome. It's definitely like a little bit sedative. It mellows my funky ass out, but still keeps me working all day, which I like. 
and I devoured that jar. That's how I know when I like something. That jar disappeared real quick. So uh, I knew to take more cuts. I'm in round three with it now, and I finally will have enough to like freeze a bunch this time and see how she washes. And I think that she's gonna wash very, very, very well. It looks just coated in resin. And from a little bit I know, it kind of feels like the tacky right resin, but we'll see. And that's the uh, honey honey banana Wilson Zero from the Nerds Testers group that we did last uh, last year. Oh yeah. So those testers are fun. That lemon degreaser sounds like a fun one too. I bet there could be something like worth sticking around in there. We shall find out. I'm I'm enjoying this uh, waves from Raw. It's slushies crossed at apples and bananas, and um, oh, it's yeah. definitely got some tropicalness to it for sure creamy tropical one of them has a nice little uh menthol on the back end of it so the one that didn't fruit was sour melon so i gotta get that one rooted do you see uh cooney's comment what's cooney talking about um yeah i totally agree from what i know they root quicker but once they root, they don't grow as fast. So it's, I'll, I'll use that situationally. Like DP was saying, if he needs one or like if I know kind of like it's very important that this one roots in a certain time frame, I like getting the unders. But from my experience, they root quicker but don't grow faster once they're actually ready to go. So I feel like it's a good tool. And I think it's something with the hormones being closer to the roots where they want to root. And as far as getting the top that's closer to the meristem where it wants to grow, I mean, that's my bro science fucking uh, way of looking at it. But I think that's kind of accurate where I don't disagree. It's just that I want the ones that grow fast once they are rooted. Grab a couple more. I got room for one, two, three, four more. And we will yeah. cut to. Boom. Actually, we can show this while. Up. Uh, boop. Is removing leaf tips reduces rooting success. I think there's a lot of uh. That page is not found. Glenn. So I'm just about done with this tray. Then I got some more transplanting to do. And then I got some dry trimming to do. Another day in the life. Living with this cannabis plant. Loving every second of it. Chad bringing the science into the conversation. He's put up a couple of videos of cloning that I've watched. Oh, Chad's here. Your boy be doing it. Doing it, doing it, and doing it. Yeah, well. so I, I think that egg. might be why these middle shelf ones are my favorite. Not quite, and that's just from observation. I feel like these ones do their thing the best. When they got a nice thick part of the main stem and not quite the top, but not too far from the top, like, that's an ideal cutting to me. It's already going to have a huge stalk on the bottom. You pop this leaf off after it has this as, like, a little reserve for nutrition. Pop that one off once you root it.
Oh. Mic yeah. check. My phone died. I'll be I'll back. Be back. I'll be back. I think I'm actually just about to sign off, Peter. I think I'm pretty much done with this tray. And I got a grip of chores as usual, so I'm going to shag ass. Do you spray your lid beforehand for moisture or? I do not. Just throw it on and allow the natural moisture in there to create the humidity? Yep. I feel like with the right air temperature and with the T5 being in the right proximity, it just, it just it soaks it up, you know? Yeah. Sometimes, like if I look at it later tonight or like, you know, 12, 24 hours and it doesn't look like quite right, but rarely do I do that. And also if I like the rare occasion when I'm taking cuttings for someone else, I might hit them with some shit in between to either keep them real happy if they were fucked up plants or to kill anything if they were fucked up plants. So it's like usually if I'm spraying, it's because there's something going on, not like the normal routine. You know what I mean? Okay. Oh, yeah. But like normal routine, I feel like even with this many cuts, even with just like 10 little cubes in there, if you put them close enough, it's usually enough humidity with the right air. Temp. I think those cubes kind of help like with soil and stuff like that. It just, uh, yeah. it, it, it'll bring it, draw it up uh, quicker. Oh yeah. So absolutely. Well, cool. I hope everyone had fun. Uh, I think I only got one more tray of cuts to do, and then I'm shagging ass to another chore. I hope everyone else out there in the cannabis world is loving life today, moving it forward. Do something cool. And, and you know, the biggest thing that we can take out today is there's a million and one different ways of doing this. Do something that you're enjoying and, and, and think about it. You know what I mean? Just think about why you're wanting to do it and, and attack it from that angle. Um, there's 101 different ways of skinning a cat, you know? And yeah. so if it's working for you, rock on, continue to let that shit work because that's what we're here for. We're here for growing great cannabis, you know, and, uh, we, we all learn and, and grow. So thank you much oh, for, yeah. for coming that's on here and, and, and showing your techniques, you know, everybody's like flowing. The beauty of it too, is that it's an art as much as a science where it's yeah. like, and you have different artists with different, um, styles you have yeah. classical you have modern you have abstract you have realism you know and that's the same i feel like with growing um i it, i think it's easy to kind of jump on a bandwagon and then yeah like uh stay only on that one you know instead of seeing like okay well they're doing this why are they doing that why are they doing it that way you know i feel like mother nature is so complex and so chaotic <laughs> hard to try to really ever quantify her i feel like a lot of the magic in life comes from the mystery of the things that we don't quite understand and i feel like that's one of my most use, uh, useful tools in my tool belt is uh trying to tap in with the unknown the mysterious and uh that's where a lot of my insight comes from <laughs> hell yeah man that's what's up well appreciate you coming on and showing your technique Hell yeah, I appreciate you, DP. Oh yeah, man. Thanks everybody coming out and checking it, uh, checking out with us, hanging out with us. Peter's on uh, doing uh, big boss stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to support Daga Garden. Support Mister Toad. His jeans are good. I just got a whole tray over there of as a Guerrero Blaster, the Skywalker Space Cheese. It's good enough to have me run it. Support the real. That's it, man. Much That's love, it. Cannabis World. Oh, yeah.